Information, data, is at the heart of our economy, but it's vulnerable to attack. Cybercrime has been categorised by the Home Office as a number one threat to the UK economy. Cybercrime is a rapidly growing problem. It is absolutely the crime of the 21st and maybe even the 22nd century. And we're all at risk. Primarily, it's organised criminals wanting to make money out of you and the people that work for you. So protection is vital. Press role really is to try and build capability, capacity and consistency in the technical cyber assurance space. As digital assets, financial transactions, customer data, or the code to run our modern cities become a vital part of business life, we enter the information age. We most certainly are in the information age. The amount of information we're generating day on day is going up. And so as a consequence, because we're generating so much more information, so the need to protect that information also increases. Criminals are starting to see online as a marketplace for them to be able to make some money. So it's really, really vital that we take online security as seriously as we take offline security. Attacks on that information, cybercrime, are estimated to cost the UK economy up to £34 billion a year. So the big ones that I've been concerned about recently are the NAV service attack in the US that took down key internet components. We've seen, for example, TalkTalk, Talk, where a bunch of customer data was lost. And most recently, we saw Tesco, where a number of people's bank accounts were compromised and money was stolen. Small businesses are equally likely to become victims of cybercrime. I think they maybe think that they don't have that data that TalkTalk Talk or Tesco, some of the bigger organisations have, but they could equally become a victim. We're talking about loss of money, we're talking about loss of reputation, and this can be from malware or ransomware attacks, but it can also be from DDoS attacks that can stop websites and businesses from working and cost them money, or it can stop public services from functioning and that obviously affects the public. British businesses rely on the technical security industry to combat those threats. Crest is an organisation that represents the technical security industry. What we mean by that is the professional services side of things that looks at penetration testing, uh, that look at cyber-related incident response and threat intelligence. We are responsible for everything from security products right the way through to professional services to make sure that people are safe. What we do is, is very different to many, many other organisations that operate in this space. We go out and help assess the capability of, of the organisations, the service providers that are actually delivering services around cyber assurance and incident response. So instead of just focusing on the employees through certification, we also look at accrediting the companies that are delivering the services. That's a really important concept because what we're doing here is we're looking at everything from critical national infrastructure right down to almost small enterprise uh, level security. So we need to make sure that those companies and individuals are fit for purpose. Crest's role is to create a framework of professional standards that are appropriate for both buyers and sellers of services. So Crest, I think, is a really interesting place. Uh, as a not-for-profit, I think it's an extremely important concept. So what we're trying to do is to represent both the buying community, the people that are buying technical services, and also the supply community to provide them a framework under which they can operate. As the potential rewards from cybercrime get bigger, the attacks are becoming more severe and the attackers more sophisticated. We're seeing a significant evolution in terms of the types of threats we're experiencing as both individuals and organisations. Historically it was all about theft, but we're seeing theft as well as denial of service, chaos. We're seeing it targeting organisations and governments, but it's also extending sideways into users and people at home as well. Businesses are the number one target of cyber criminals. Biggest three risks that are going to affect organisations today. Number one's got to be theft of money from your business bank account. Next thing that worries me is theft of your intellectual properties. So the designs you spent millions of pounds putting together, someone else now has them. And finally, the one that affects many businesses is that of ransomware. All of a sudden, you find all the data on your network has been encrypted and you can't have it back unless you pay cash. As the risks escalate, so the technical assurance industry becomes more important. The idea of technical assurance is there to 
give you confidence that your business is in a place where it's secure enough to trade online. So that you've got the right controls in place, you know your systems are locked down, you know they're fit for purpose, and you can use them to trade online, interact with your customers without losing a load of money. The cybersecurity industry is a growing and valuable part of the UK economy. Last year, it generated revenues worth £3.17 billion. The value of the, the cyber security related industry is significant. Um, we have looked at penetration testing alone within the UK and we believe that's close to a billion pounds. If you then add in all of the other component parts, it then becomes quite a significant contributor, both in terms of level of protection, but also an industry in its own right. Britain was one of the first countries to recognise the value of a professional technical security industry. I think the reason why the UK is in such a good place with cybersecurity is our history. You know, here we are at uh, Bletchley Park in the Museum of Computing. We have government that's been very strong and supportive of security. We have great security services that do outreach into the business community as well. I think we're really good at cybersecurity in this country because we're starting to bring all the different elements together that really, really need to make this work. So law enforcement are working with private industry, working with government, working with policy makers, working with the financial sector, working with retailers. These close links between the cybersecurity industry and government agencies have created a unique environment to share and develop exceptionally high-level skills. The cooperation between the, the National Crime Agency and CREST is really important because we can work with them closely on the cyber prevent strategy and, and they can help us identify the positive pathways into the industry. The collaboration between government and the regulators, buyers and suppliers within the UK has been unparalleled and as a consequence uh, we have now 10 years of making it work. So that combination of collaboration between government and industry underpinned by really good academic uh, institutions that help us with our history, I think it's a fantastic reason why we're really good at this stuff within the UK. Crest members vary from small boutique companies to the big four management consultancy firms, all offering technical assurance services. Crest members provide a range of services and currently we break those down into a number of different areas. So we provide uh, assurance in penetration testing, cyber security related incident response, uh, threat intelligence. A key task undertaken by Crest members is penetration testing, assessing a company's vulnerability to cyber attack. A penetration test covers a huge range of things, whether it's from looking at a mobile app, a web application, your web services, your people perhaps, all the way through to even Internet of Things devices, those devices we're carrying around, putting in our houses that, if they're not set up right, can let the hacker in. Should a cyber attack occur, Crest members can help companies deal with the incident. An incident response organisation are going to come in and help you manage the incident. So they're going to um, have a look at the points of entry, um, the effects of the incident, what's recoverable, what data has been lost, and basically manage you through the entire incident and provide the expertise that um, you maybe don't have in-house. The UK is now recognised as a world leader in the technical assurance industry and CREST has been at the forefront of establishing professional standards around the world. Governments look at the UK as a centre of excellence when it comes to cyber. In 2012 we launched a chapter in Australia uh, and over the last 18 months we've launched chapters in Singapore, Hong Kong and in the US. Beyond that we're speaking to government and regulators in South America, in the Middle East, in, in Africa. This expansion means that regulators around the world are adopting UK standards creating a significant export opportunity for British companies. The US government's putting 17 billion into cyber in 2017. UK government's committed to 1.9 billion over five years. It's a big amount of money, and so it's very much up there, front and center of government's targets and objectives. It's not only an exciting opportunity for British companies to grow into foreign markets, but an essential strategy in dealing with cyber threats. The people that are mounting attacks against us see no boundaries between government or business. They just see money. They see no boundaries between international because they can attack from anywhere in the world. The UK's excellence in the field of cybersecurity means not only do foreign companies seek out British expertise, but Crest members are ensuring that Britain remains open for business. 
It's important to have an organisation like Crest because I believe you need some form of standards and some form of structure to enable the organisations to grow and the industry to evolve to, to relate to the new threats we're seeing coming through within the industry. We're trying to make sure that the UK is a safe place to do business and is perceived as being a safe place to do business.